Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program to Infinity and Beyond. This will be our 12th attempt and I'm pleased to note as we start the game here and go to our vehicle assembly building that I have actually made some off-camera progress and I think we are in for some good stuff here. We're going to load up a rocket that I designed in my own time using the advice from the comments from the previous 11 videos and we're going to try to put ourselves into orbit this time. We're going to do baby steps. We can aim for the moon just a little bit later but first step one is just getting into orbit and I have a fairly... I'm fairly confident that we are going to be able to make that happen. Okay, so on the ship right here, this is a ship that I have designed, uh, like I said, in my own time. You'll notice a few striking differences. I mean, it's still hideous like all of my ships. Let's get rid of this fuel duct. That doesn't look right. Uh, oh, not like that. Okay, like that. Fuel duct has to go. Okay. Um, yeah, it's still hideous like all of my other designs, but it has a notable departure in terms of design philosophy, I guess you could say. For one, there aren't as many solid booster stages. There's only one stage of solid boosters, and there's actually a lot more of them in the same stage. So it's not like before where I had like five solid boosters stacked on top of one another, like five, 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 uh, and I was struggling to get enough speed or enough acceleration off the launch pad. Like this time we have, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six. So you have six solid fuel boosters plus another three with the radio coupler. So nine solid boosters uh, that will get us off of the ground. That might actually only be eight. No, it's nine, I think. Okay. Uh, that will get us off the launch pad. They're not going to get us that acceleration, but all they're doing is getting us off the launch pad. We have structural fuselages uh, to make sure they don't get too close together and overheat. Then, this is the most notable thing. This was kind of my eureka moment. Uh, and again, thanks to the comments. We have a lot of liquid fuel engines here with a shitload of fuel uh, and actually RCS thrusters as well, which are going to help us stabilize ourselves in the air so I don't have too many more like ones where my ship just falls over. Everything connected by struts, and this is what's going to power us basically from like 30 seconds after liftoff until we get about 100,000, yeah, probably like 95,000 uh, meters off of the ground. Then we have our final stage of the rocket, very, very similar to earlier models that I've done, except I've added a little bit of extra fuel here just in case. That's going to make it a little heavier, but I, in my experience so far, it's been worth it. I am going to connect these fuel tanks to this fuel tank. Oh, if I can actually make this work. This took me a while. Oh god, what have I done? Uh, I don't think it matters too much where these things go in terms of symmetry. But we might as well try to make it as symmetrical as possible. Move it over just a little... yeah, like that. Why not? Uh, and we'll get rid of this fuel duct. What these fuel ducts do, if I could actually get them attached, is they... Nope. Uh, I've historically had some trouble with this. They route fuel from these tanks to this tank so that this engine can actually use it. Otherwise, it would not work like that. Uh, what if I do it like this? I've never thought about that. Wow, that's way easier. Okay. So, we're going to call this the USS Buttfucker Mark 1. I'm going to save it. Make sure everything is A-OK -okay here. Yes, I think so. Uh, and we're going to launch it. And you're probably going to notice an immediate difference. I also have the advanced SAS module instead of the uh, normal SAS module. So we're going to turn SAS on, we're going to crank up our throttle, even though it doesn't matter for solid fuel boosters, and we'll have liftoff in 3, 2, 1, and it goes up totally fine. You can see there's like basically no wavering, and we're not leaning at all, and the reason for that is that we are, well, A, the uh, SAS module is doing a good job for us, and B, this thing is more or less symmetrical, and it's all tied together with struts, so there's not too much like bending or swaying, so it goes up, you know, more or less at a 90 degree angle, which is exactly what we want. So. I've practiced with this rocket a little bit. Oh, gotta get ready to decouple here. And we'll do this. Uh, probably not the best course of action or the best design that my solid fuel boosters literally explode under my rocket as soon as the jet fuel touches them or the jet exhaust or the liquid fuel exhaust, forgive me. Um, but yeah, yeah, I've fiddled around with this rocket a little bit. This is like the second one I've designed in my own time since reading all those comments. And the comments are indeed helpful, I have to say. But always keep in mind that there is a little bit of a lead time. So sometimes if I make the same mistake three, four videos in a row, it's not because I'm an idiot and I don't listen. It's actually just because, like, I recorded four videos at once or something so that I could keep this ridiculous upload schedule that I have going. But anyway, uh, basically what we're going to try to do is put ourselves into a uh, Kerbin orbit here. So we're going to get an elliptical or, you know, maybe a circular orbit around Kerbin. And I've done that a couple of times. I've tried a couple of times with this design to land on the moon. We've gotten very, very close. I think it's something that I will be able to do on camera, but it might take me a couple of videos. I'll, I'll do, I'll record immediately after this and do a, a lunar landing attempt. Uh, but it, it might be good, it might be terrible. So we basically have a shitload of fuel here. 
for these liquid fuel engines. And this is what's going to take us from, as you saw, like 2,000 meters above the Earth's surface, or the Kerbin surface, up to about... These will probably get us to about 85,000. And uh, after that, we will go to the final stage of our rocket, where I will have a ton of fuel, and also, of course, the ability... Oh, man, did my fuel tanks cover my RCS thrusters? If so, that is shitty. That could actually be a big mistake, but... Uh, we'll see. Anyway, we're just going to keep going straight up here. I think it's pretty much without question that this is like by far the best launch design I've ever had. Uh, it, there's probably room for improvement. For example, you're going to see something in a second here. Like as these three fuel tanks run out, for some reason the middle engine stopped firing. Like they've run out of fuel, but only these ones on the outside, like the ones on the outside still have fuel for some reason, despite them being set up exactly the same way. So I don't know how that works, but you know, in the end it actually doesn't really make too big of a deal because we're, we're definitely accelerating substantially quickly here. And it's just a nice, it's a more pleasant launch than what I've been used to in the past. So we're going to wait until we are at about 100,000 uh, meters in the air, or meters above the Earth's surface. And then we are going to try to adjust ourselves accordingly. We're going to try to put ourselves basically like a, along the horizon of Kerbin. And then we're going to accelerate until we see that, using the map, until we see that this blue line basically forms a ring around the planet which will uh, allow us to maintain a stable orbit, hopefully. One that doesn't decay and eventually, you know, crash into a building somewhere. So, we are about to decouple our last, our second to last stage here. And go to our last stage. We'll climb to about 100,000, but I'm going to throttle down a little bit. Just trying to match my uh, acceleration, so like, like, match my velocity. How should I say this? Match my throttle so that my velocity is, uh, is pretty low. <laughs> so my acceleration is zero, but my velocity stays the same, is what I was going for, okay. Now we're going to try something. Uh, I'm going to turn SAS off, I think. And we're going to rotate our ship a little bit. That's not really the direction. Oh, it is the direction I wanted to go, okay. And what we're going to try to do is line it up exactly on this sphere down here at the bottom. So that the blue and brown, uh, like, we're at the line right between those. And that is a tip straight from the mouth of babes. Michael Ale Fox gave me that tip. And by doing this, we should be able to secure a, uh, a safe orbit around Kerbin, is my guess. You'll see that this teal line will continue to grow and grow and grow. And eventually, uh, it should surround the entire planet. And we'll try to get a nice, nice. I don't know if I'd want a close orbit or a, or a long orbit. It doesn't really matter to me. But anyway, uh, you can see like we're decelerating here fairly quickly, which worries me a little bit. I'm hoping that I don't, you know, crash into the surface of the planet anytime soon. But we should start moving upwards. Oh, we are still moving upwards. Okay, that's good. And now our, we're accelerating forwards again. Okay, so I think we're going to be okay. This should actually give us like exponential growth on this teal thing right here. So as you can see, uh, if you actually know what you're doing, or are told what you're supposed to do by Michael A. L. Fox, and, you know, thousands of commenters, uh, then it's not that difficult to put something into orbit, but it becomes much more difficult if you're trying to land something on the moon. I'm just going to make sure that, okay, this is going fine. We can probably time warp a little bit, but that's not necessary. I have a ton of fuel, as you can see. Like, the reason I have all these extra fuel tanks, you can see they're going down really slowly because it's draining from these three, like, triangulated ones at the same time. Um, what the hell was I going to say? Oh, yeah, going to the moon is, is much more difficult. As you can see, like, even though we're making, like, a pretty solid orbit right here and we'll have one probably within the next few minutes. Moon is a, a great distance away so what I oftentimes am trying to do is like get in orbit around Kerbin and then try to line up a, a shot with the moon where I can you know get within uh, maybe a million meters and then adjust my thrust accordingly. So that's why I have those extra fuel tanks on there. Just in case you know two hours from now I decide I need well it, it would be two hours of real time it'd be like 10 days game time, but in 10 days I decide I really want to have like a powerful thrust to get at the moon. Um, so we're about to, well actually we're not really about to run out of fuel, but we should be about to create a stable orbit here. So we'll just keep throttling up here, I mean holding our throttle at maximum, and once this forms a, a nice ring, we might even make a big ring so that I can time warp a little bit, we can time warp a little bit faster here anyway. And once this ring gets joined together, I'm pretty sure we're going to have a stable orbit. We're going to start draining our last fuel tank soon in a second, but that's okay. Okay, so there we go. The orbit has been formed. We got 
parts here where we're very, very close to the Kerbin, uh, which frightens me a little bit. But I think it's going to be okay. So I'm just going to try to stretch out our orbit here so you can see. This is my my goal for going to the moon now, is I wait till... Oh! I wait until we have, like, the moon's... The moon lined up on our path here, as our orbital map will show, and then I just orbit around Kerbin, or like slingshot to it, uh, in order to get to the moon. I, it looks like we might actually have a chance of going to the moon this time. Fuck it, let's try it out. I just wanted to orbit this time, but that was, uh, you know, kismet, I guess. So we got, what, 6 hours, 6 minutes, 28 seconds. So what we're gonna do, we'll keep our throttle off, we will crank up the speed here to like 100 times. And we'll see if maybe I can't get at least close to the moon here. You'll just have to take my word for it that I could have landed, or I could have created an orbit around uh, Kerbin there. If I miss the moon, uh, I might have a chance to get captured by Kerbin's orbit again. Or I might just, you know, die and float away into the universe. So how much time? We have five hours. Getting a little bit close here. I think maybe I should slow down so that I can meet the moon a little bit more effectively, but let's speed up time. Uh, and when we get maybe within like three hours, okay, that's where we are right now. Three hours, 29 minutes. I'll take a look and I'll adjust myself accordingly here. See, this is what always confuses me, because that's the moon. Can we see Kerbin well? Uh, that's Kerbin, okay. Now I've lost the moon. <laughs> moon, where did you go? Oh, there it is. Okay, so I, I don't know if I should like be aiming towards it at this point. Or what's going on with that? Because it seems like I'm still getting closer. Let's speed up time a little bit more. Like, that moon is moving closer to me, isn't it? It's not moving further away? I think so. Oh, there's the moon right there. Okay, I see, I see. Uh, so we'll wait until we take this little curve here. And then this should capture us in the moon's gravity. Okay. Now time warp down to one. We're going to try to hit this moon where it hurts. Where is the moon? Oh, well, there it is. Okay, so first things first. SAS off. We'll try to... Oh, that's not what I want to do just yet. Yes, we'll use... Uh, oh, God. Okay, SAS on. <laughs> Let's rotate ourselves using Q and E until uh, I can do this appropriately. Does W work? No, I'm still doing a lot of trial and error, as you can tell. D, A, okay, we're going to rotate ourselves a little bit more. W, no. D, not quite. Rotate ourselves a little bit more in the other direction. D, no. Rotate ourselves this way. D, more or less. Let's use E quickly. D, okay, this is, I think, what I want. So we'll turn ourselves towards the moon here. I think that's Kerbin way off in the distance there. All right, so we've turned towards the moon. SAS back on. Uh, we need to adjust our position a little bit more. What button do I want to press to do that? W seems okay. Perfect, okay, so we're more or less lined up with the moon. Let's crank up on this throttle a little bit. Get some good acceleration. We're still a, a decent distance away from the moon. Like if I look at my orbital map here, my lunar map, now you can see we're gonna basically meet it in like, let's say 30 minutes, it's hard to see. So we're not that far. We're going to escape from the moon soon, which is something that I don't want to do. I actually just want to touch it. But, you know, it seems like we're aiming right at it now. But we could easily be going in the wrong direction. So I'm going to cut the throttle for a second. Uh, and maybe adjust our positioning again. This might not be the best way to go about doing this, but this is the, the northern lion way. So we'll adjust ourselves again. What can I say? I love adjusting ourselves, and we're still accelerating, so I can actually decrease the throttle a little bit. I think we can go on a little bit more of a time warp here. I think we've been captured by the moon's gravity, because we're actually accelerating despite the fact that I have my throttle off. Can we make this happen? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I'm going to time warp a little bit here, and we'll watch the ship. Because I think that's that's more uh, natural for me than watching the map. And we're getting very, very close to it here. But we could easily miss it. Oh, we're, so, we're so close. I might just uh, take it down here and adjust ourselves again. We have a lot of fuel. And this is the reason why I got a lot of fuel. 
How do we want to do this one? We want to hit W. No, we want to roll a little bit. We want to roll a little bit and then A, D, D will do it. Okay. So I think that's going to be a little bit better. We might even want to aim down a little bit. That will be S. Okay, that might be a little bit better. And we'll give ourselves just a little kick in the ass here. Like I said, we got a ton of fuel. We might as well give it a crack. So I'll do that until I get down to about two-thirds fuel remaining. Who knows? Maybe I got a chance to take this bad boy back to Kerbin. That's unlikely. Then we'll cut throttle. Look at our map. Oh, we're so close. Look at it. We're like, we're going to bend right up against it. Um... So I'm just gonna keep following this. I guess the more adjustments I make, the the closer we can be. Okay, I can see how we're gonna miss this now. Hopefully this isn't too dark for you guys to see because we did just go behind the sun. Maybe I can, no, okay. <laughs> You'll just have to trust me on this one. I'm gonna crank up the throttle again and get us going in this direction. Note to self, brighten this in Sony Vegas. And I don't care if we run out of fuel. That is fine by me. These Kerbals can die on the moon. They knew the risks when they got involved. Are we going to hit this planet or this body? It certainly seems like our line is going through the planet now. I think we're going to crash land on the moon. It's probably the first time in human history that has been, you know, something that people were excited to say. Let's just blow our fuel here. We'll stop accelerating and then we'll, we'll let it happen. It should be a beautiful moment. I didn't expect it to happen either. So now we can accelerate a little bit. Let's, oh, let's slow it down just a touch. I don't want to, oh God, here it comes. I, I can't even, do we fly through the moon? We're inside of the moon right now. Uh, I guess I've entered some moon caves. So that's pretty weird. Um, can't really adjust the camera too much. Godspeed, Kerbins. Time to do some fucking flips. Um, no, but seriously, I have no idea what happened. According to Kerbal Space Program, we went into a tunnel inside of the moon. So I'm not really sure what's up with that, but, you know, all we can really do uh, at this point, if the game would actually load again, I think it maybe caused some sort of catastrophic glitch. Really? Well, uh, in any case, thank you guys for watching. I was... Pretty sure that we were going to have something awesome happen there, but I guess... Well, that was pretty awesome, actually. But anyway, in any case, progress has been made. We'll continue... Oh, we're back. Let's crank this shit up to... Cannot warp faster than 1x well below arm. I have no idea what the fuck is going on right now. Look forward to the explanations. As always, I will see you guys next time. Oh, Jesus Christ, I just came out the other side. Well, look, there's the rest of our ship. We can crank this up a little bit now. Just see what happens. We might as well take this to its logical conclusion and see where my ship ends up. It looks like it's just going to escape Kerbin's gravity very shortly. We should probably get, yeah, a little bit faster than that. So it's escaping Kerbin's gravity, and now it is floating. This is like 2001 A Space Odyssey now. I have no idea what the fuck is going on. Um... You know, there's our home that we've left behind. As always, thank you guys for watching. That was weird, but it worked out. I'll see you next time.